Assalamu alaikum. My name is Philip Verding, and uh, I reverted to Islam in uh, early August of 1999. Previously, I had been a Christian raised in a Roman Catholic family, and uh, in my in during my teenage years, I partly because I was more interested in doing my own thing, but also partly because Vatican II um, Church Council had had changed a lot of things in the church, and it didn't mean as much to me anymore. So I I wasn't very religious until I was about uh, 25 years old, and at that time I had decided that uh, I wanted to repent of my sins and to, to serve God and do what God wanted, wanted me to do. And uh, I joined a Pentecostal holiness church. What, what happened in the meantime is that uh, as, as a few years went on, I started wondering and uh, questioning um, some of the teachings of that particular church. And I, I started looking at teachings of other Pentecostal and Evangelical Christian churches. And what I came to learn was that uh, the teachings that Protestants and independent Christians, Pentecostals, Baptists, etc., most of them, um, the, the main core of teaching was developed in the fourth century uh, by the Roman Catholic Church and uh, the, the teachings were actually finalized at that time, or by the, by the early Catholic Church, actually. And so I went back, um, later I ended up going, um, before I became a Muslim, I ended up going back to the Roman Catholic Church and, uh, and looking at Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy to see if, if that's where I, that's where the truth was. In the meantime, bef even before that time, I had met Muslims. The first um, real group of Muslims that I became friends with, uh, where I found them, to, they were from um, Eritrea, and uh, I found them to be very nice people, very um, well-mannered and, and uh, respectful people. And of course, being a Christian, I would want to share the, what I understood to be the gospel with them. And uh, I can remember that nothing I said ever uh, ever caught their interest. But they would their answers to me were always uh, were always uh, very friendly and very respectful. And I, I remember um, that uh, one of them. Um, Brother Mamoun, actually, uh, it was his name, actually asked, um, actually asked me, um, why do Christians eat pork? And um, it is true, most, not all, but most Christians eat pork, and the vast majority, in fact. And so what I remembered is in the book of Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament, uh, the Apostle Peter has a dream and uh, in this dream, three times, God says to him, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter sees all these unclean animals. And all three times, Peter says, I can't do that. The Torah doesn't teach that. I've always followed the Torah all my life. And uh, I can't, I've never done this. I can't do it. But then when Peter woke up, Peter realized that uh, what the dream was for um, was that um, God was telling Peter to share the gospel with, uh, with the Gentiles. And actually later in that chapter, that's, that same interpretation um, is given, um, is said that that, that is the interpretation God meant, although most Christians don't, don't follow that. Okay. So eventually, I did go out and buy a Quran. I bought Marmaduke Pictel's, uh, Muhammad Marmaduke Pictel's translation of the Quran, and I read through it. And what I found was that the uh, the Quran was uh, 
a lot easier uh, to understand than I expected it to be, and it had a clear message throughout. Even as a strong Christian, there were things in the Bible that I would wonder about. Why would it say this here and, and this other thing in this other book? But I didn't really find that in the Quran. And there were a few qu questions I did have, and so I, I approached uh, another Muslim, and uh, I, I asked this brother um, some of my questions, and what I found out was that I was told that I couldn't learn about Islam just reading the Quran, that I had to get with a, a study under a sheikh or a scholar, and um, and also study the the six uh, Sahih Hadith books, the traditions of the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. And so I did that, and uh, someone gave me a copy of uh, Dr. M. M. Khan's uh, summarized Sahih Bukhari, and so I read through that. And one of the things is that some of the some of the traditions did not seem to me to match up with what I had read in the Quran. Also, some of the some of the traditions I read, and these are supposed to be authentic, were were wild, seemed wild to me. And uh, the the one that always comes to mind is where the prophet allegedly um, instructs some some people to drink camel urine that that always seemed odd to me i also learned about what happened to the fourth caliph that uh, ali ibn talib and that uh, muhaviya uh, attacked him and wanted and wanted power and if imam ali is the caliph that means he's a successor to the prophet so attacking the caliph is like attacking the prophet um, but yet uh, this person attacked Imam Ali also got power and recognition and then when Ali was murdered by another person uh, Mojavia got the kingdom and not only that but his his son when he became Caliph Yazid he murdered the son of Imam Ali, Imam Hussein. And this led me to, to read about the, uh, the Shias. And so when I converted, um, I, I became uh, a Muslim uh, practicing the Jafari Madhab as a, as a 12 or Shia Muslim. And uh, now I, at this time, there isn't, there isn't a lot of time left, so I'm going to, I'm going to finish right here. But what I want to say is that I, I, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me the grace to find Islam and to become a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum.